All right, what I want to do is uh, introduce to you a tool called Targeting. And it's a visual interactive tool that helps to refine and develop ideas and bring them closer to a desired state or a desired outcome. And so we're going to ask uh, Teresa, um, if you would, to, um, to share with us or give, us, uh, for, give the group a little bit more of some context around this. The desired state here, wouldn't it be great if my school could integrate Tim in their daily lessons plan? And then what I wrote down here, that's the desired state, which is the target. And then where the current state is that you're noticing there's a lack of engagement and motivation that you're seeing in the classroom. So for the, for the group, uh, if you'd like to add more, then if, if you don't mind just sharing with the group a little bit more about this context. Sure. Um, I work at an elementary school with students uh, K through six. And I just noticed that um, there are some teachers who are doing very creative things in the classroom, and there are some teachers who are still, you know, having them open up their textbook and turn the page, you know. Um, and they're not as um, successful when it comes time to testing and things, so I thought it would be important to incorporate um, Tim in order to make the lessons more engaging and hands-on and creative for the students. Thanks, Teresa. Now I'm going to open it up to the group. Uh, what questions or comments do you have for Therese so, to help you better understand the context? Okay. What is Tim? Sorry, uh, Torrance Incubation Model. Okay. What have you seen that you've liked? Um, I've used Tim with a few different grade levels and the students are much more um, motivated and excited about their learning and uh, participate, you know, every student is, is very um, part of the learning. They're very, they participate. Thanks. Now, Tim, you had asked the question, what is Tim? When Torrance Incubation Model was mentioned, just using those names, is that enough to understand mm -hmm. what she's referring to? Okay, just want to check. And the same thing for others? Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Do any teachers at your school use it besides you? No. no. A few have been introduced to it, but not actually use it yet. All right. Thanks. Teresa, you had given us um, four ideas as it relates to this challenge. Uh, you want to move from this current state to the desired state. So the four that you have here is create lessons at grade level to hand out. And the other one is provide staff with research on the use of Tim. The other idea is videotape myself or yourself uh, using Tim with students and then do a professional development around Tim. What I need you to do, if you would, uh, Teresa, can you step up here to, to this uh, board? And I'd like you to, if you would, place these ideas on this target in accordance to to what extent does it get you closer to meeting the target. And some of these may be right on target, others may be that it's close, or perhaps you're far from the target. So if you could, just place them accordingly. So his language is very precise around what he wants her to do and why. Because we're looking at the ideal state and how far these potential solutions are from that ideal state. Okay. Question for you. When you place this here, tell me more about why you place one closest, this one closest to the target, your desired state. Um, I've already handed out um, a few sample lessons to certain grade levels. Okay. Sure. And then I'm going to go back to this one here. Uh, why did you put it way out here? Is it just as? I just I feel like I would do that as an addition to doing the other things, but it's not something I'm very focused in and excited about doing. Okay. Thanks. Now these lines here, in terms of where you place them, they're very subjective. So I'm just bringing that out in terms of sharing your thoughts with the group, so we can understand where you place them. Now, what about these two here? Why did you place them here as opposed to closer or further apart? Um, I feel kind of equally um, excited about doing both. I think the professional develop. I feel like they kind of correlate because mm -hmm. at a professional development, I could provide research with them. Okay. Is there one here that is, um, if you would put at the top in terms of working to refine it and develop, is there one here that you want to start off with that's pressing? wants you to select one so they can do pulls and pushes. You can always go back and do another after, but you want to start with one that she really wants to develop. What I'm going to do, actually, I'll leave this up here. What I need to do is, is have the group 
generate what we call, you'll notice here on this target, you have these arrows. One is called pulling and what pushes. Pulling means what are the things that actually pull the idea towards the desired state? And then the other arrow means push. What are some things that are actually pushing away the idea from actually meeting or getting to that desired state? So what I'm going to do is have the group generate for Teresa what are some things that are actually pulling some of the positive attributes to this idea of doing professional development? Put one pull per each posted, say them out loud so the whole group can, can hear. What are some things that are actually pulling, you know, some of the positive attributes that are pulling doing professional development towards this desired state? Teresa's growing expertise in use of Tim. Right. Thanks. Teachers are more aware of how to use Tim. Thank you. Others? Thanks. And this one? For motivation. Okay. So really, really good use of visual, the target, and then right next to it, a flip chart that has the pulls and pushes. Thanks. Build confidence in using Tim. Having those arrows helps me remember which is what with the pushes and pulls. Yes, because oftentimes confusing. resource group members, clients get confused. Other pulls, other things. We'll get more options to teach. A hand book might be generated as a model for others. Thanks. Teachers get on the same level with teaching and technique. All right. Thanks, Christmas. Teachers. Academic score may increase. Thanks. Teachers will feel more comfortable using them. All right. Wonderful. Thanks. Some of the graduate classes like 670 and 690 could give her time and energy to develop personal development. Thanks. Student Special. creativity increase. Right. Students will be motivated to go to school. Thank you. Notice he thanks them and oftentimes says their name. Requirements. Okay. Keep them coming. He's doing great. Keep them coming. He's praising the process. A couple more, or a few more. Teachers' creativity increase. Students will focus more and understand subjects. Connect with New York State objectives to Tim. All right. Now like what I just, go ahead. Try. Like teaching more fun. All right, so now what I need you to do, we've now looked at some of the polls, things that are actually helping um, the positive attributes to this idea that helps to bring it closer to the desired state. What I want you to um, identify are what are some things about this idea that is actually pushing it away from Teresa uh, reaching this desired state. What's some, th some thoughts that come to mind? Close-mindedness from teachers. Okay, thanks. Close. Sometimes I like to restate it up there above the polls so that they remember what the solution, potential solution is as well. Mm-hmm. Teachers are too comfortable with their instruction. Fear of change. Fear of change. Have to mandate professional development. Okay. Pressure to teach to the test. Um, the new common core standards are teachers are feeling overwhelmed. Yes. Resistance to new techniques. It takes time to develop a professional development workshop. Yeah, and sometimes I'll have them phrase these pushes as how-to statements right then. Yeah, that's the way he's doing it. They'll go back and rephrase them as how-tos later. But this is an experienced group, so they actually could do it right as how-tos. Right. Unclear definitions of creativity. So, Teresa, when you're saying, will the, the teacher respond, that means, so here you are introducing Tim's, and then you might not even get any feedback. They just mum about it. it. Okay. Right. Oh, they cannot see the rewards in music, too. Change the teacher's lessons that have been here for years. Okay. I'm going to ask you now, Teresa, if you would, can you look at some of these pushes, and are there some pushes or concerns that you have here that you would like your group, this group, to help you generate ideas to overcome some of these pushes? Are there some particular challenges or pushes that struck you that you'd like the group to help you in overcoming? Um, I think the, um, the 
but you're free if you want to come up and then look at it feel free to do so and notice he noticed that she was straining to look and she really needs to get up there and read them over Communication from staff. Will the teachers respond? And then changing teachers, um, this lessons that have been there for years. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular one that is, if you were to prioritize, or you would want to get the group to help you on right now? Which one of these would you like to get ideas from? For. Um, those kind of go hand in hand. So something Okay. So. Hand in hand, so if you were to um, write something, how might we get teachers to respond? Is that something that's okay, or do you want to rephrase them another way? Um, how might we get teachers to respond to something new that okay. hasn't been in place to do So there he had her rephrase it as a challenge question or a challenge statement. One of the, this push here and turn it into a challenge statement using an open ended question. So, how to um, help me with the, the, the question you had crafted for me. Um, how to get teachers to respond to something new. And, you know, sometimes it can take a while to restate something, and you can play with it a little bit to get it the way the client is comfortable with it, especially if they're looking at two that are related and they need to think about, well, what exactly is that problem statement, challenge statement. It's fine? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is ask the group, well, first of all, does the group understand the challenge that we're going to work on here? How, how to get teachers to respond to something new, uh, primarily with, with Tim. So what you need to do now, if you would, is generate ideas to address this open-ended question. What ideas, think of as many ideas as possible on how you can address this, and then say them out loud as you um, give them to me. Miriam. Show the similarities between the old lesson to the new lesson, a uh, new way of um, teaching. Great. Thanks. Provide food. Provide course hours for teachers. Thank you. Provide food. Provide food. Okay, good. Uh, make hands on. Do a magic trick. Tell a joke. Uh, show statistics that it worked. Explain to them the importance of Tim. Work with the principal on changes and make it mandatory. Show studies that prove Tim's successes. Show them the benefits. Notice how organized the post-its are up there. They're all in a row. Notice the good use of the professional process buddy. And the process buddy only gets up when she's needed. So you got to kind of gauge whether you're in the way or you're needed. I'll give them time to learn something new. Show the benefits. Make it fun. Great. You guys doing great. Keep coming. Make, make it a fun competition. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Which goes with give prizes and rewards for using it. Thanks, Joe. And Thanks, set Mary. up a website for assistance. All right. Thanks. Keep them coming, guys. Doing great. Have them read books on creativity and children in the classroom. Get testimonials from students who have experienced Tim. Um, use Tim when presenting on Tim. Teresa, I just want to do a check with you. We have a few ideas here, several ideas here. Are there some things here that uh, are going in a direction that when you look to uh, address this challenge, it could actually move this to the, the actual desired outcome. Mm -hmm. And if not, can you let us know so we can redirect the group to generate ideas so that it may be more uh, supportive? Yeah. So we're, no, we're doing the right, the right direction? Okay, thanks. Other thoughts? So, he, so he's checking in with the client. And going back to what she wants to get out of this session, because that's the ideal goal. and asked if she's going towards it or whether she needs to redirect. So there was some interesting massaging of that and making sure they understood, she understood her original desire. School events that are for us in town. All right, thanks. Good. Give a box of animal crackers to each teacher that starts the change. Keep instructions simple and readable. Um, demonstrate how you could connect him to New York State standards. Yeah, link him to Common Core. Thanks. 
All right, let's just uh, fill the page and then we'll stop. Unless you tell us that you want some more. Um, bring in you guys um, to my school. Bring in IC, IC faculty. So we'd come in and then the capacity would be what? For training, for orientation, for? Um, so clarification asked, it, asked for. Extend the learning to them. Like I would present and then you guys would kind of be there as well to answer any questions or show it in action. OK, thanks. Heighten their anticipation. Get rewards to teach us that about the change. Okay, now what I want you to do, thanks for, for the, uh, the options you've generated here. Now, taking this into consideration, um, teacher response, where is it? Um, okay, can you tell me, uh, this one has to do with actually do, uh, yeah. can you tell me when you take these ideas into consideration, what insights are you getting, and are those insights helpful? Do these insights bring you closer, or they keep the idea in the same place? Um, all those ideas definitely brought the professional development idea closer. Okay. And I'm curious, I'm going to have you dig a little bit deeper in there. Can you be specific in terms of what are some of the insights that you got that helped you to say, all right, you know what? That, if I take into consideration, would move it closer, and then to how much closer? Um, I feel like closer than the create lessons at each grade level to hand out, closer than that is to the target. Um, and I feel like, because part of my mindset was I didn't know where to begin with doing the professional development, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have a lot of ideas on how to make it creative and engaging for the staff as well. So I feel like I have a lot of ideas around that um, to make it interesting and fun for them. Okay. And so if you were to reposition <coughs> this, would it go here or would it go here? Um, I would just move it up. And sometimes I, I'll actually have the client come up and just physically move it. Yeah. In terms of what are some things that you would need for insight or for other kinds of thoughts or other kinds of support to move this to the actual desired state? Um, then I think it would have to go to them actually using it with the students okay. and seeing how it works out. Right, so there might be some things you can work out with regard to action steps, things that you might right. do specifically to bring it closer to here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop there, but have I, if I had the time, what I would have done is actually gone to the other, other ideas and did the same process, pulls, pushes, and then look for some challenge, the challenge that you want to work on and then generate ideas for that. And then again, I would revisit where do you see this in position to the, as it relates to the desired state. Does it move closer? Does it stay the same? And why? What insights do you get? What other action steps you might want to take from those insights? Well, okay. targeting. So some additional tips um, where we stop there, uh, the client had to overcome one push. Right. But you can also uh, overcome a second push or concern right. that would – and have the group do something similar, um, diverge on ideas to overcome that push. And then actually have that client perhaps select some specific ideas using dots or um, – specifically to focus in on which ideas are she going to add to that idea that would move it towards the center. So with this one, he really showed how you massage it in a more informal way. She talked about it a little bit. They moved it on the target. Um, and what Russ is talking about here is more deliberate. So say you have more time for this tool and you really want to develop that thoroughly, then you go ahead and give the client the the dots, have them do hits, uh, and then work with those hits and look at moving moving it closer. Uh, I like the way he had said to her, all right, if it's this close, what would get it to on target? And she actually talked about something. Um, I'm just curious with regard to your observations from how I positioned targeting. Uh, what are some things that you observed? What are some kind of connections? What questions do you have for me with regard to targeting? I like this um, tool because the, um, a lot of the ideas seemed more um, actionable. Mm -hmm. they, it felt like they, they were, there were definitely things that you could do something with right away and, and combine them. Sure. So an implementation so, tool, so it lends itself um, to that. 
All right, so you felt, what I'm hearing you say is that in terms of what, how they were, it's how they were written or in terms of how they were generated that? Um, even how people were thinking about them, um, I think because of the fact that there's this definite, almost like a point on a line, this is where you want it to be, this is where it is, sure. and it actually uh, made it more that there was a true direction to get there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't as, um, Divergent, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Mm -hmm. it, it just was very directed. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Miriam. Joe. I like to tell you it really combined several tools in a way, because uh, you've got current reality and the vision, and then you've got the targeting with the pulls and pushes, and then you have a challenge statement. So mm -hmm. it kind of pulls into the next. Phase, which is all part of targeting, but she's pointing out some different aspects of it. Using actually going back to challenge statement, which sure. they may have had before, but now it's more clear. Great, mm -hmm. great. Thanks, John. I, I like the graphical presentation in the sense that it helps the resource group to see uh, the, the, the nature of how the client is feeling or approaching this, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't move, it gives me an indication that there is a, there's another block or barrier that has not been teased out yet mm -hmm. that might become really important in an actionable situation. Sure. And so with that, with that in mind, as you know, when you're in this kind of position, you start to unpack it a little bit more. What is it that's blocking it? Yeah. You know? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, you know, we used it to really to overcome a push, but you also use it to uh, increase a pull to mm -hmm. take a strength and, and make it stronger. Also, in yeah. the same the same method, you would be using it. And that's it. You use the, the word, the operative word you use is make it stronger. So it is. It's a, it's a visual interactive tool, but it's used in the service of trying to refine it and improve it and make it stronger. Sure. And I like the notion that if there, if a pushes away from the center, could be identified then uh, if there were a robust set of them, uh, one could begin to say, here are some significant blocks or barriers that really need to be looked at that might prevent other things that pull in from actually happening. So yeah. that graphical display really helps. Okay. And it's versatile, too, it's that it, you can use it for, let's say you're doing strategic planning, or if you were looking at uh, a certain action item or um, you know an outcome that's already, again positioned as an action item you can look use it as a sort of like a performance dashboard as well so it's flexible it doesn't necessarily have to be used in the way I used it uh, for this particular challenge and I could also begin to cluster pushes or pulls in groups in any of those rings <laughs> that would be it's easy it's a quicker display than just a linear approach that we use in assisters and resistors. So I like that clustering in graphic style. Thanks. Others? Curious? Thoughts? All right. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for your time. Thanks, thank Teresa, for you. supporting. Yeah. Okay, targeting. Targeting. So, you know, um, Couple, couple of things. Uh, what was just shared was probably the 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 most often used application. Yes. In terms of strengthening a particular uh, solution or proposed solution, um, the the bullseye, the center, is really the ideal state. Now, sometimes in this case, it was tied into the vision. Um, sometimes it's a really specific criteria in terms of what the idea needs to have. You know, will it engage teachers? Will it be scalable or whatever it is? Um, the visual nature is really, they, they hit upon this, but so powerful. Um, you can draw it. Uh, sometimes we actually buy archery targets, these small archery targets, and we put them up or a big one. So it, then you've got some color there. Um, and a, a more advanced use sometimes is where we'll use tape on the floor or ropes and uh, you could have a, a group visually represent where they think the idea is in relation to the center by standing 
So that would be rather than an individual application like we saw, if you have a group, then the movement and the actual visual of people seeing where others are standing could be quite powerful. It can, because then you can see who's close to it. And as the facilitator, you can say, Russ, could you explain why you're so close? And then someone else may be really far away. Maybe, Diane, why, you know, what is it that is keeping you from the center? What, why? And so you really get um, into some of those underlying issues that come up that way. So a nice way to have a structured conversation with a group to move a group towards some kind of ideal state or target. Yeah, that would be more of a, a sort of a consensus. Consensus building. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, it's always ta is more complex, always takes longer. But then again, uh, the time spent on something like this is well spent because these are issues that normally either aren't resolved or you go spinning around and around and around in discussions that are unproductive and it takes a very long time. So the time spent for a tool like this is actually time well spent. Right. And, uh, you know, Dr. Cabra uh, referenced uh, sometimes he might use this in other parts of the process, like strategic planning. So you can use it to really hone in on a vision. Um, you, you can really use it at, at different parts within the thinking skills model. Uh, one of the applications I personally use it quite often is in new product development. So some of the facilitations where we'll take concepts, and each concept will have a separate target because the bullseye is the same in terms of the ideal. And you'll have people kind of put their name on these mini post-its and kind of identify where they, you know, where's Russ in terms of this concept and where's Bob. And then uh, uh, next to it is pushes and pulls, a flip chart where folks will generate here are the pulls, here are the pushes, and we generally have them phrase them as how-tos or in what ways might I. Uh, and then later on, we'll have you know, the client or the client group really go through and identify the key pushes, and we'll try to overcome them. Now, one of the tools that's been used before, assisters and resistors, uh, targeting actually incorporates uh, something that is, that is very similar, if not the same, uh, and that is the pushes and pulls. Uh, and so that whole concept of really looking closely at the strengths and weaknesses and overcoming the weaknesses you'll see in lots of convergent tools. Uh, this one is particularly powerful in the way that it's structured along specific ideas and working on those. And that is targeting. Mm -hmm.